Getting your first clients to your online business is a priority goal to ensure that your business is profitable. But I also know that it can feel really daunting for first time business owners. Where do you find these clients? How do you pitch to them? And most importantly, how do you focus your marketing efforts to attract more of these clients to your business? So in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you a few simple but effective ways to get your first clients for your online business so that you can start sharing your wonderful work with more people. Hey everybody, thank you so much for joining me today. I am Lydia Lee and I help budding entrepreneurs to create their dream business without struggling with overthinking, self-doubt and complicated strategies. So if you are looking to build a business designed from your strengths, your values and your personality, you are in the right place. And don't forget to hit the subscribe and the notification bell button to tune in for videos just like this one. All right, tip number one today to start getting your first clients for your online business is start with your low hanging fruit, which is your existing communities and your existing network. We often disregard the people that we have already built social equity with. These are people like your colleagues, your family, relatives, people that belong in particular associations and organizations that you already belong to. So think about places like your community center. Think about the your place of worship. Think about memberships and associations and organizations you're already a part of virtually and in physical communities. This is where you start because these are the people that very likely are going to support you in your new business. They've built some trust and credibility, right, with you already. And on top of that, it's people that share common values with you, right? Very likely there is a client in that pool of low hanging fruit network that already exists with you. However, they need to know that you are starting a new business. How many times have we kind of hidden behind our new business and say to ourselves, until I get my website up, until I get my branding done and I look perfectly polished, then I'm allowed to tell people about my business. But people are really excited to help you, especially in the start of your business. You don't have to have a website to do this. You certainly do not have to have a big audience to do this, but you do need to start showing up publicly and telling people about what you do. So start with your low hanging fruit, start with your personal Facebook page, start with whatever assets that you have. You might be emailing people individually. You might private message them on Instagram or a social channel, right? That you've already connected with them, but tell people about what you do. And so one of the things that kind of holds people back from making that ask or sharing that new business idea is not finding the words, right? What do I say? How do I say this? Even though I'm a new business owner and I don't have huge credibility yet, how do I get people to support my business? Well, today I'm going to share with you a little template that you can use for yourself, put in the words that work for you, but it's a really great start to use as a very short template to start telling people about your business, why you're starting your business and what you're looking for when it comes to support in getting clients or referring people to your business. Watch it here. Here's a quick template that you can use when you're crafting a message to someone in your network or your community or your friends or family to tell them about your business and also to help promote or refer someone to your business. So hi, Mary, I've got some exciting news. I've decided to, and this is where you can insert your why. Why did you decide to pursue your business? What's your motivation behind starting your business? So just share a little small snippet of your story there. And then say, I'm really excited about sharing my gifts beyond my current nine to five gig. Up next is my dream too. And here's where you can describe what your goals might be. Maybe it's to work with five coaching clients or enroll students into your course, right? Keep it short, keep it concise, and just say exactly what you want there. Next, I'm looking for individuals that are, and here's where you think about what kind of ideal client in what situation and circumstance is the best fit to utilize you and your work right? I'm currently looking for individuals that are pivoting in their new career, finding the next career. If you're a career coach, for example, and are looking to insert your desired goals, what is, or insert your clients and desired goals, which is what is the ultimate outcome that particular client is looking for. Okay. Do you know anyone that may need help around this? I would love to invite them on a call to learn about what they need. And I have a ton of knowledge in, and this is where you insert your expertise, whatever your niche might be. And I would love to share it with them. I appreciate your support and look forward to hearing if you know someone who may be a great fit. P 
P.S. What's new with you? Now, this is important because we want this also to be about a, a moment you can touch base with them and ask them about their lives. So here's where you ask them something genuine, right? For example, if you saw on their Facebook page, they just had a new baby, you might say, saw that you and your hubby just had a new baby. Loved seeing those gorgeous photos, right? Speak soon, Lydia. So hopefully that was a great, um, example of a template that you can use. You can change this up, make it your own, make it your voice and your language, but it can be simple, can be concise like this, and you can definitely be sending that out right now and start getting lots of your ambassadors and supporters around your business. So here's an action you can do today after watching this video. Take a few minutes to get out a piece of paper and make a short list of potential clients, partners, collaborators, fans, ambassadors, right? Whatever who these people are that can really help you spread the word about your business. And I think if you take a bit of time to just look through your contact list, look through your friends list, you'll be surprised to find out that there's actually quite a lot of people that could be a support system to you. Tell your immediate family right away. Every time you expand your network by asking someone else to share something from their network, it really just grows and expands your audience base as well. But taking that time to make a list helps you to then send out that little template, right? That I just showed you um, and give them a personal message on telling them your purpose of your business. What, you know, who are the clients you're really looking for so that people can start thinking about who are the people that could be a good fit for you and potentially also post something like that in your social media to try to help with some referrals for your business. The second tip to get more clients to your online business is to start sharing your perspective right now. Not when you get your first client, but right now. Trust that you have particular knowledge, information, experience, and know-how that is good enough, and if anything, helpful for a lot of people to know what they don't know that you know, right? You are someone that is passionate about the topic that you wanna share in your business. And someone out there in your network may need to hear what you've got to say. But if you keep waiting on getting your first client to feel that that's the only credibility card you can play in order to start sharing your philosophies, sharing your beliefs, sharing your story, well, you're never really going to work up to ever feeling good enough, you know, to be that advocate for your business. So stop waiting on the first client to activate and start actually putting this new role for yourself where you are someone of knowledge, you are someone credible and valuable. And what is your only job is to start showing up and giving people an opportunity to get to know you and your story. Now, a really good first story to get started with is your purpose story, your origin story. Why are you starting the business you want to start? When people understand the history of your, you know, your life, what's caused you to have a turning point in your life, what pain points you experienced to transform yourself, and this is what led you to the new business you want to start, um, people can really resonate with that origin story. And it's a great story to tell, right? It gives you that why story that people really connect with. But most importantly, it's the easiest story to start for you because you know that story, you've lived it. So it's a beautiful one to share as a way to tell people what you do. Secondly, start really thinking about what it is that you believe in in your business. What are some concepts? What are uh, your beliefs, your philosophy? What are things that are happening in the marketplace in your industry you disagree with? Share an opinion, have a viewpoint. People hire people that are confident about the foundations they stand on, right? It might not be a popular viewpoint. You might be saying something very different from what's in your industry and your niche. And that's okay because someone out there is looking for that difference, looking for that unique person, and that person could be you. So take a moment to really think about what do I care about sharing with my audience? What are some of the things I keep repeating when I talk about my work? What are some problems out there in the world that are belonging to my clients and my ideal clients? are experiencing those problems and how can I use those topics to start to teach, to share, to share an example, to maybe even share a personal story of how you navigated that challenge as a way to plant that seed, you know, that you are a credible person to help, that you get them because you've gone through what they've gone through. And that is definitely a way to build trust and credibility, even if you haven't worked with a client before. So think about the assets you have again, right? Is it a Facebook page you already have? That's a personal page. Doesn't have to be a business one. Uh, if you're a writer, you don't have to wait till you have a website or a blog to do this. 
You can go to uh, some, uh, you know, a blog page called medium.com. You can start blogging literally in three minutes uh, and have a place to share your thoughts. But don't let technology or assets of complicated ways uh, prevent you from sharing your story and sharing your viewpoint, because that is what it takes to really attract customers to your doorstep. Tip number three to start getting your first clients to your business is to create a simple marketing plan to be visible for your business. Now, as business owners, it's non-negotiable for us to be visible in some form or another. You get to pick what your strengths are and you get to pick, yes, which platforms feel better for you, what is going to amplify your personality and your strengths, but it's non-negotiable to keep showing up and sharing what it is that you do, sharing your concepts, you know, even before people pay you to do it, start building that credibility and that trust and planting those seeds. But keeping it simple is important because the minute we overcomplicate something like marketing, which is already a daunting topic for a lot of business owners that are introverts, you know, or someone that doesn't feel like they're a salesperson or someone that is confident promoting their work, the simpler you make this plan, the easier it is going to be for you to show up for that marketing plan and actually do it every single day consistently. Because the whole whole thing around being successful in marketing your business is about consistency, not more platforms, but it's about consistency and focus, right? So reflect on um, what I talked about before about your viewpoints, right? Make that list of what are the concepts, what are the stories, what are the problems that I want to talk about, and just maybe come up with five things today, right? That you feel important that you really want to share, right? Some of that could be your own story. Some of that could be um, concepts that you are doing in your work or will be doing in your work with a paid client. Then I want you to think about what is the one platform that allows me to share my voice and is in my genius zone? So when I think about your genius zone, I think about, and marketing as an influence tool is how do you usually influence in real life anyway, right? How do you communicate? How do you build relationships? Now I'm uh, more of a vocal video, live face-to-face kind of girl. That's why video does really well for me. The minute I have to write a blog, it takes me three times of more of an effort and more of the hours. And I dread marketing activities like that. Now, that doesn't mean I don't write in my business, but I will prioritize most of my core marketing activities to vocal marketing, like showing up for podcast interviews or pitching for podcast interviews, or making videos just like this one to share my viewpoint and to help you with a particular challenge. But choose your platform effectively. If you're not someone that wants to be on video and it takes you a long time to prepare for it, you don't need to do that right now, right? If you're a writer and you're just someone that communicates best when you have time to think about what you want to write and you're long form, writing a blog might be the way you want to go. If you are someone that loves to interview other people and you just want to be someone that's not the one with all the answers, but you're great at curating people, finding the stories, extracting that, you have a bit of a journalism hat, right? Maybe having a podcast or an interview series on video might be something for you, right? If you're someone that loves live things, live streaming on Facebook or Instagram might be the platform for you. Whatever platform you choose, they all work. (laughs) What's most important is what's going to help you show up every day in this one platform. And I would encourage you to pick just one because building the habit of showing up for something new takes time. And the more, again, you simplify and make it easy for yourself to do it and not overwhelm yourself with multiple platforms you have to be on, then you're actually going to do this more consistently. And within a month, within one to three months, you're going to start to see a shift in the the audience and the traffic that might be coming your way because of that consistency, right? And plan your content ahead of time. So like I said, your homework for today is come up with five topics, five things you want to speak on. Very likely you've already been talking about it. You're a bit obsessed about it. That's what you should be talking about first. And when you plan your content accordingly, you can then be able, right, to go on live or do that blog or be on that video much quicker if you've planned for it uh, to be easy for yourself, right? Ahead of time. Creating a confident plan to ensure that your business is ready to start receiving paying clients is a big part of why I created the 90 Day Launch Academy program. Definitely go and check it out if you need some support, mentorship, and a community to launch your business with us by going to screwthecubicle.com forward slash 90 dash day dash launch on our website. I hope that you've enjoyed our video today. As usual, your comments, your insights, your feedback is important to me. I would love to hear 
hear from you. What is your biggest takeaway from today's video? And what is the one thing you're going to implement uh, right now so you can put theory to practice immediately? Thank you so much for joining me today, and I will see you soon in our next video.